Hey y'all, welcome to Russell's Chipotle Kitchen. Today we're gonna make something that people either absolutely love or absolutely hate. And I'm talking about fruitcake. I happen to love it. My mom's recipe is over 60 years old. It is so good. So let's get started. Before we even get started, we're gonna take a casserole dish and fill it um, about, I don't know, a third of the way, three fourths of the way full with um, hot water. Let me see what my instructions, it says a third of the way, but you know what? If you fill it halfway, it's not gonna be a bad deal. So um, this goes underneath the pan. You don't put the pan in it. This goes on the rack below the rack that you're cooking your fruitcake on, okay? What it does is it creates steam in the oven and it helps to keep it nice and moist. So, and if we start out with hot water, we maintain hot water. Um, if you think that you're gonna forget about it and not check it, uh, don't use glass, use metal, because if this glass bakes dry, it there's a good chance it's gonna crack in the oven and that's not gonna be fun. So, um, if you have a tendency to forget about things like that, don't use glass, use metal, um, set a timer, whatever you need to do. Anyway, a lot of people ask me, they email me, they message me, and they're like, is the temperature in the instructions right? And I'm like, yup, that's right. The temperature that, you, that the fruitcake bakes at is 250 degrees, okay? Not 350, not 450, 250 degrees. And again, it just sort of, I guess, slow cooks it. I'm, one of these days I'm gonna try it in a slow cooker. But it just sort of slow cooks it, it stays moist, it, say, it stays gooey, it's just delicious. This fruitcake is not like any other fruitcake that you've tasted. Um, I do not know where my mother got the recipe, but I can tell you that this recipe is at least 60 or 70 years old. I've had one or two people that have commented on the blog or emailed me that they their mother did that fruitcake and they had lost the recipe and they were so glad to find it again. All right, so the first thing that you're gonna do is you're gonna need, um, candied pineapple and I like to get red and green candied pineapple but I couldn't find any this year so I just got the yellow kind and I think that the recipe makes one one loaf of fruitcake and I need to make three um, one for my son that's in California one that's for my son and his family that's in um, uh, Virginia and then one for us so I'm going to double it and thinking that that will make two, but I may end up with four. I absolutely can't remember. So, so to double it, we're going to need two pounds of dates. And it's a lot easier if you get the chopped ones. Um, when I picked, these were the only ones I could find. And so when I picked them up, they're not chopped. And so I'm gonna have to chop them. And that's a pain, but I'll show you how to do it quick and easy. And then, we're going to need uh, one pound of candied pineapple and we're going to need one pound of candied cherries, green and red. So that's what brings our green and red in there. And believe it or not, that's the only fruit that this recipe uses. It also uses um, a pound of pecans, but obviously since we're doubling it, we're going to need two pounds of pecans. My goodness. And then three eggs, which doubled is, you'll see me put six eggs in there. Um, a cup and a half of sugar, a cup and a half of flour, a teaspoon of baking powder, a little bit of salt, and I think, oh, and vanilla. And that's it. So, Let's start with the uh, pecan, actually. The reason I want to start with the pecans is that I'm going to chop them in the food processor and I'm just going to do it very coarsely. I, I don't, I usually chop them by hand, but this is a lot of pecans. So I'm going to try it in the food processor. I don't want to get them too small and we'll see how I do with that. Okay. 
We want two pounds pecans, so I'm going to zero this out, make sure it's on ounces. And there's one pound. Oops. Two pounds even. Woohoo! Okay, two pounds of pecans. I'm going to do this in the food processor and hope that I can pulse it quickly enough that it doesn't turn into pecan dust. Let's see what happens. Let's see how that did. I'm kind of afraid that it's uh, too, um, too cut up, but we'll see. Yeah, it really kind of is. So I am afraid that for these two pounds of cons, we are stuck um, cutting them up by hand. Do not use a food processor because I have just proven to myself that a food processor will chop them up way too much. You want them to be kind of chunky and coarsely chopped. You don't want them a little bitty. And while some of these are coarsely chopped, like those are about right, um, at the bottom, what I have is a lot of little bitty pieces and dust, and we don't want that, okay? I'm still going to use these, um, by the way. I'm not going to waste them, but um, I'm not going to do any more that way. And then I will chop these a little at a time and add them. Of course, you don't need to hang around for that, so I'm going to just uh, chop a few so that you can see basically the size that you're going to want them. Oh, and by the way, as with everything, if you will take the pecans and, uh, and roast them in the oven for just a few minutes um, before you use them, it'll bring out so much more of that buttery pecan flavor. Do that with everything. It's delicious. So you want your pecans to be coarsely chopped, and by coarsely chopped, I'm talking about like that. So you're going to want to chop up all the pecans to about that size. And there's no reason for you to sit here and watch me chop pecans. So I will see y'all in a few minutes. All right. So we're done with chopping up all of these. I got the last of them here. And let me tell you, this is a lot of pecans. Now we're going to need to cut the um, dates. And they're really, really sticky. But at the same time, we don't want those to be um, cut small either because everything needs to be, in order for this to be at its best and prettiest, everything is cut kind of large. And you can see the pictures on the blog, what I'm talking about. It just is beautiful. When you're doing these dates, you want to make sure that there's no, um, no pits in them because you don't want anybody biting into one and breaking their teeth. Then they're done that. It is not fun. No. You want to cut them about, oops, about like that. So if I take a date, I'm just going to slice it, slice it, slice it. So four. Just slice those dates into four. That should be about right. Break them apart if they're stuck together. Again, you probably, you could do this in the food processor, but probably what would happen is you would end up with paste, and you don't want date paste. You want dates. You know, my mom and dad, I can remember, they used to sit at the table and, um, and crack pecans for days before mom made her fruitcakes. It, I just can't even imagine. I am so blessed to be able to go to the store and just buy pecans that are already shelled and not have to worry about sitting there and picking pecan nut meat out of the shells. <sighs> that is two pounds of dates that have been chopped. Now, if you can find them already chopped or diced at your store, go for it, okay? Those will be perfect. All right, and I'm going to put these in with the pecans, and then I'm thinking I might need to get a bigger bowl, but we'll see. I'm not sure I have a bigger bowl. All right, I'm grabbing my spaghetti pot, and the inside is awful. Um, not dirty awful, just the uh, coating has worn off of it, and it just feels, I don't know, 
I've told you I have sensory processing disorder, and it feels like a chalkboard down there, and I just want to make sure that there's no dust or anything on it. And there's not. Perfectly clean. Yay. But it's bigger than the bowl, and I think I'll have an easier time mixing in it. So let's keep our fingers crossed on that, right? We want to make sure that everything is uh, mixed completely. There. See? Okay, now what we need is 8 ounces of the green cherries and 8 ounces of the red cherries. And I am going to put those in whole, just like that. And here's the red one, and I'm going to put those in whole, just like that. This does not, this fruitcake does not take long to put together. The main part of it is the cutting, the pecans, and the um, dates. And you can get around that if you um, buy them already cut, right? Okay. Now we need a pound of pineapple. And like I said, if you can find the green and yellow, it's much or green and red is much prettier than just the yellow. So if I was doing this, um, I would do one, a half a pound of green and red mix and a half a pound of the yellow. This does not have what's called candied mixed fruit in it. Please do not get the candied mixed fruit. One more time. Do not get candied mixed fruit. It has a bunch of junk in it, and it's it just will not come out as good. If you get candied mixed fruit, do not blame me that your fruitcake doesn't taste good, okay? Um, you want candied pineapple, candied cherries, dates, and pecans. That's the main stuff in it. So I'm going to put half a pound of the candied pineapple. And then the other half pound of candied pineapple. I don't know, did you grow up with a whole bunch of containers like this in your refrigerator for leftovers? I sure did. My mom didn't, you know, she'd grown up, well, she was an adult actually during the depression, um, a young adult, but an adult. And uh, she never threw anything away. All of these became um, containers for leftovers. Okay, we've got our candied cherries and our candied pineapple, our dates and our pecans in here. And at this point, we need to make sure that it's thoroughly mixed. Be real careful because the pecans do tend to get stuck down on the bottom. So you want to make sure that you bring those to the top so that it's really well mixed. Or you're just going to end up with some weird fruitcake that doesn't hold together. And it is just like pecans and maybe some dates. Okay, this takes one and a half cups flour, and I'm sitting here hoping that that's what I've got in here, um, because I am doubling the recipe on the that's on the blog. So when you read the recipe, it's not for this amount; it's for half this amount. Okay, and um, so don't get confused. I just don't want to confuse myself by calling out measurements that are different from the ones that I'm using. All right, yay, we had a cup and a half, which uh, recipe calls for three-fourths a cup, but I'm doubling, so that's a cup and a half. And then put it right in there. To that, I'm going to add a half a teaspoon of baking powder. And if I see any lumps in it, I'm going to break them up. I hate biting into a, something and having a biting into a big chunk of baking soda or baking powder. Actually, see now there, I almost messed up. It's, um, I'm doubling, so it's a full teaspoon of baking powder. It's a half teaspoon of baking powder for the, the original recipe. There we go. Gotta be careful. One teaspoon of kosher salt. Um, kosher salt is a little bigger than regular table salt so if you're using regular table salt use three quarters of a teaspoon rather than a teaspoon okay or now I said that wrong 
um, again, I'm doubling. So if you are using uh, table salt rather than kosher salt, use about a third of a teaspoon of salt rather than the half teaspoon the recipe calls for. So there's my salt. We're going to mix that up. And to that, I'm going to add a cup and a half of plain white sugar and stir that up. We want to mix our um, dry ingredients together. And in this case, the sugar is considered a dry ingredient. I know most of the time it's not. But for this, it is. Make sure that you get everything stirred up really well. You don't want all the baking powder hiding down in the corner. You want it mixed in evenly. Uh, the recipe calls for it to be sifted in because this, as I said, is like a 60 or 70 year old recipe. We don't really sift anymore, not too much. And so I'm not asking you to do that. But what I am saying is mix it up good. There we go. Now we're just going to pour this right over our fruit. And guess what? We're going to mix with our hands. So here we go. Basically, you want a good coating of the flour mixture on everything. So take your time doing this and make sure that you get all of it, all the way down to the bottom, remember? And that's why you pretty much need to do it with your hands. Now, see how that's all covered? There's nothing in there that's not covered with flour, and uh, the flour's in there pretty evenly. I'm going to move this again, and now what I'm going to do is I am going to beat up six eggs. Um, for the original recipe, it's three eggs, because remember, I'm doubling. I just want to keep reminding you all of that, so that when you see the recipe, you, you know, you'll understand why um, it's different. And these are large eggs I'm using. All right, now we want to beat these until they're light. And uh, you can do that in a mixer if you want to, or with a handheld electric mixer. I'm just going to do it with a whisk because my mixer bowl is full of cookie dough right now. So, and mainly you just don't want egg white streaks in it. You just want it to be really well mixed. Actually, I'm going to use this. Have y'all have y'all ever seen one of these? Do you remember these? My mom had my mom had one. Um, this isn't it. She hers had a red red wood top on it. It was old. But <clears throat> these are actually called um, Dover beaters and they're just basically a handy mixer and they're great for stuff like this. I think you can still buy them. Um, they're great for like whipped cream or egg whites or anything like that where you just need them done, a, a few of them done pretty quickly. There we go. Two teaspoons of vanilla. And we'll give it another little work. There. I used to love to do that when I was a kid. Now, all we have to do is take this and pour it over that. I'm going to use a spoon this time at least to get it started. And I'm going to hope I don't have to mix it with my hands because I really, um, from this part on, I'll mix it with my hands if I have to, but I'd rather not, right? I know that you're thinking that this, there's almost no batter, and you're right. I'm telling you. The reason that this is so good is that there's almost no batter. It's just that little bit of flour and the egg holding it together. It comes out so moist and sticky. It's just like candy. It's so good. And for all of you fruitcake haters out there that are going, ew, that's fine with me. It just needs more for me and the rest of us who love it. But seriously, um, people who don't like fruitcake and have tasted this, not knowing that it's fruitcake, have loved it. Now 
what we're doing here is we're bringing it up from the bottom and making sure that we don't have any dry flour down there. That's what you definitely don't want. Everything has to, I think I've got at least four fruit cakes, don't you? Okay. Um, anyway, uh, bring it up from the bottom and make sure that there's no dry ingredients or powdery down there. It all needs to be moistened with the egg. I guess I don't have to work out today. Oh, forget it. I give up. You can do it with a spoon if you can. This is it's just too hard with all of this. I want to make sure that it's all stirred in really well. By the way, in case you were wondering, I've washed my hands about five times since uh, I started the video. So, they're clean. Okay, that looks like we've got it all done. I'm going to wash my hands one more time and then we'll get the um, we'll get the loaf pans ready. Okay, you can use either wax paper or parchment with this. Uh, my mom always used wax paper and I always did too until I forgot to get it before I started this video. So I'm using parchment. It's going to work just fine. It's I just use the wax paper because mom always did and it always makes me feel kind of nostalgic. But the first thing that you want to do is you want to spray your loaf pan or pans, as the case may be, with nonstick cooking spray. Then, you want to line the pan with parchment paper as evenly as possible. and get it all the way to the bottom. It'll kind of stick to the, the sides because they've been kind of greased. And then you want to spray it again. This stuff is very sticky and you don't want anything to, um, you know, to make it so... Okay, in the past, the first time I made this um, and I was away from home, and it was right after I got married the first time. I was in like 1980. It was Christmas. Maybe it was 81. Anyway, first time I made this. And I didn't get the wax paper sprayed enough. And what happened was the paper stuck. And so we ate fruit cake with paper on it. And it wasn't quite as delicious as my mom's. But um, anyway, ever since then, I've been very careful to make sure that everything gets really good and greased. So now what we're going to do is just take this sticky mixture and put it right in the pans. And as I'm putting it in, sometimes like if there's two green cherries together, two red cherries together, I'll separate them so that when it's baked, it gets a little more mixed up right I know it's kind of picky of me but it's just what I like to do yep think I've got four fruit cakes here that's not gonna hurt my feelings any okay you kind of stack it up and then you want to press it down this is not gonna rise and you want it to be dense so press it down so that it packs together and I'm I mean I'm literally pressing this as hard as I can to get it to pack in there okay these are um, one and a half quart loaf pans by the way but anyway they're the Pyrex one and a half quart in case you were wondering what size they were and there we go there are four fruit cakes um, I knew it looked like a lot four fruit cakes all ready for the oven. And those will cook for an hour and 45 minutes. So during that time, y'all go get a cup of coffee. I'm going to um, clean up and I'll see you back here. Okay, y'all, we're finally done. It took a little bit longer for them to bake than I thought it would. Um, they should be around 180 to 190 degrees in the center if when you check it with an instant read thermometer. So I have let this one cool off just a little bit. 
because I want to show y'all what we've got here. This one got done before the other ones. And as you can see, it is full of fruit and pecans. So good. I'm probably going to mess it up by cutting it while it's hot, but it's going to be worth it. Um, do not cut it in a sign motion. Cut it like straight down. And you're going to, you can't cut thin slices on this. They're going to probably be close to an inch thick. Um, one loaf of this will feed about 10 people. What I do is I cut thick slices this way and then cut them in half this way. But do it whatever way you want. And we're going to go straight down. And look at that. It's so beautiful. You can see there's hardly any cake in there. That's all um, dates and fruit and pecans. It's just delicious. I know y'all are going to love it. Y'all, if you like fruit cake, this is the stuff. It is so easy. It just takes some time because it takes so long to bake. But it's gooey and moist. And it's so much more like candy than cake. If you never liked fruitcake, you might give this a try because it's, I'm telling you, absolutely delicious. If you already like fruitcake, you definitely want to try this because this is the best one in the entire known universe, I promise. All right. I love y'all. I'll talk to y'all later. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to come back next week. And have a great day. I love y'all. Bye-bye.